Hello people, I'm Ginny Motherall and I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video is all about that marvellous witch's sabbat, the winter solstice, otherwise known as Yule. I first want to discuss what the winter solstice is. So if the sun is here and the earth is here, the earth is tilted. The North Pole is tilted, the furthest away from the sun. And the South Pole, which is my thumb, is tilted nearest to the sun. Hence why Australia are in the basking in the heat of their summer. Hi, my Australian friends. This is the time when we have what is known as our shortest day. And in the UK, the hours of daylight are about seven or eight, depending on which part of the UK you're in. The word solstice comes from sol in Latin, the sun, and stare, to stand still. And this is because our ancestors thought that that is what the sun was doing as it's reversed its direction through this world. Our ancient ancestors thought that the sun stood still because it rose and set above the horizon in the same place. And therefore, we had a 12-day festival for the winter solstice. The winter solstice was one of the oldest festivals. Pretty much every single culture in the world has celebrated the winter solstice, as can be seen by the fact that Stonehenge, which is set up in alignment for the winter solstice, is over 5,500 years old. The word Yule, we don't know where really that comes from. It could come from the Norse. It has um, associations with Odin or Woden, as the Anglo-Saxons called him. Or it could come from the Anglo-Saxon word Hule, which means wheel. We believe that the sun whirled its way through the seasons of the year as a wheel does. So who really knows? However, what we do know is that we celebrated this festival for 12 days. Now, in today's modern times, we have adopted something called the Gregorian calendar. Previous to us adopting, Christmas Day actually fell on the 21st of December, the Solstice Day. And as we all know, there were 12 days of Christmas, a bit like Yule. This is, of course, is a very clever ploy by the early Christians to involve themselves in the culture of this country and to basically take over one of the biggest pagan festivals and use it to their advantage. And this can be seen in everything that Christmas has evolved into, the present giving, the feasting, the bringing the greenery inside. It's pure paganism. The Anglo-Saxons would bring in a lot of evergreens into their house to symbolise the life that was still apparent in the world and to help the sun rebirth itself through into the new year. The symbolism for the evergreens that you brought into your house was very important. You would bring in holly, both prickly and smooth, because if you just brought in prickly holly, it would ensure that the life that you're promoting forth for the next year would be ruled by a man. Prickly holly is male holly. Smooth holly, which is, tends to be the holly at the top of the trees where the a holly bush doesn't need to protect itself from grazing cattle because it's too far up. That's where you find smooth holly. And smooth holly is a female holly and prickly holly is a masculine energy holly, although they're on the same bush. It's very important to have both in your house for domestic bliss and harmony. It was also a great thing to bring in because, of course, this is the time when the Holly King concedes to the Oak King. The Oak King now rules for the next six months. This is a very Anglo-Saxon parable and it was only really told in certain areas of the UK. It wasn't as a worldwide tradition for them as far as I can see because there's not very many sources which talk about the Holly King and the Oak King. This bringing in of the evergreens around us from the fields is a very pagan custom. As the trees have cast all their leaves upon the floor, the evergreen trees are a symbol of life and hope. 
and hence we would garland our homes with them. And this also has the added benefit of drawing the fae into our homes. This is the time of year that the fae might be shivering and cold outside, and the garlands of evergreen leaves that we decorate our homes with are a sign to the fae that we are welcoming them into our homes. And hence why we put up a wreath on the front door. This wreath is such an old tradition. It predates Christianity by hundreds and hundreds of years. Romans did it, Etruscans did it, Greeks did it. We all loved a wreath. Now what they made the wreath out of is, you know, generally evergreens because this is the time when we need the force of life in the dark days of the darkest winter. Make sure that your holly wreath has both prickly and smooth holly within it because this will bring you domestic harmony in the coming year, which is very important, especially the amount of arguments I have with my husband. I need to have a bit more domestic harmony this year, I think. Poor Mr Metherill. He does get it in the neck occasionally, but I'm sure he deserves it. The winter solstice was the day when the druids would go out and pick mistletoe. Now mistletoe is a herb of the sun, so they would pick it at midday to ensure that it was at its sun strength. If you haven't seen my mistletoe video, do have a look at it because there's a lot of information there about why and how you should use mistletoe as part of your celebrations. And if you haven't seen it, I'll put it up here for you. Once they had picked their mistletoe, the ancient druids would bring it to their altars, whereupon it would be blessed. Each household of the community would be given a sprig to take with them into their homes. Now, all that kissing under the mistletoe is explained in my video, so do have a look at it because it is quite fascinating. Once they had blessed the mistletoe on their altar, it was time to light the Yule log. Now, this was traditionally made from an ash tree. There are a couple of traditions associated with the Yule log. It should be given to you as a present or cut from your own land. You should never buy it. Ash is the preferred wood. Ash burns the brightest and the largest and the longest, after all, of all the woods. And it was considered great in Norse mythology. It was Yggdrasil, wasn't it? The ash tree that holds heaven, earth and the in-between. However, other logs were used, such as oak and the hawthorn or pine, whatever. So how this would work is they'd drag this half a tree into their great hall. They would decorate it with holly, ivy and mistletoe and all the evergreens. Then pour libations of either ale, cider, wine, whatever happened to be at hand over it and bless it for the coming year. It would then, this massive tree, be shoved into the fireplace. It was lit by a piece that was saved from the previous year's Yule log. And they lit the end of it, and then as that end burnt, they sort of pushed it into the fireplace, this massive tree. It sounds completely unsafe. I bet you they burnt down loads of houses doing this. This Yule log was then burnt for the 12 days. So you can imagine how big this tree must have been that they're shoving into the fire. The ashes from the Yule log were kept and they were either rubbed onto the cattle in blessing or sprinkled a little into their drinking water so that everyone could receive the magic of the Yule log. It was there to herald the new year. Of course now we have transferred this large tree into a small cake form which is utterly delicious and actually I really don't see any problem with if you produce a Yule cake if you bless it and put your intent upon it, as they would have done with the Yule log, there is no difference that when we all eat a piece of this Yule cake that we receive some of that magic. Sometimes the Druids would even carve a serpent within the Yule log so that this represented the rebirth. The Ouroboros, the circular serpent eating its tail, is a very famous sigil of eternity and that was one of the reasons why they carved the snake into the Yule log. The Christmas tree, which is that ancient German tradition of bringing, you know, a large tree into the house, wasn't really followed. We would, however, decorate a tree outside and we'd bring some of the pine needles into our home and possibly burn them. 
This is a very old sort of cleansing ritual. In fact, the Iroquois, the Native American tribe, are known to burn pine needles at this time of year to provide a cleansing ceremony within their homes. This particular burning of pine needles also traditionally has the added benefit of reversing hexes. So if someone's hexed you, you can burn some pine needles around you and this will send the hex back to the person who cast it. So very useful. And the other thing that it did is to cast out any evil spirits. So it is a cleansing, purifying, de-hexing, anti-evil spirit burning spell. So you can't really get much better than that, can you? It covers all bases, doesn't it? The gift-giving tradition that we associate with Christmas is also very much taken from Yule. The midwinter point was a time of a bit, it's quite depressing, you know, we've only got seven hours of daylight in the UK. It's a bit dark and dreary, isn't it? And what warms the heart more than a giving a gift to your loved one? So it was the main day of the year for we don't know how long, but a long time that we have given gifts. And this tradition obviously was just taken over by the Christians. And if you are a witch rather than follow the tradition of Christmas, although I tend to do both, my main gift giving is at Christmas because that is when everybody does it and it is just easier. However, Yule is special for me and I will do something special on it. In fact, my nephew was recently born last year on Yule and he is a very special baby. Talking of babies, one of the things that they would do at this time of year is to make holly water. Now, holly water is simply holly that is steeped in water and it's best to do it with moon water. Now, moon water is made on the full moon and if you haven't seen my moon water video, I'll put it up here for you if you don't know what moon water is. To make moon water, simply have a large bowl, put some water in it, put it outside for the moon, draw down the moon, call your intent onto it. If you want to make holly water, put some holly in it. This water was then used specifically on the winter solstice to scatter over the baby's heads because it gave them protection for the next six months. And it is a wonderful water to bless your children with. We've always used water as a blessing. Think of holy water in the Christian faith. You know, they didn't just come up with that idea. It has been used by many cultures before them, especially the pagans. The Anglo-Saxons believed that the night of the solstice was when Woden, or Odin, Woden as they called him, led the deities across the sky in a wild hunt. And these deities took the souls of the dead with them. So it's not really a great idea for you to be outside at this time because your soul might be taken by Woden and his other cohorts in their wild hunt across the sky. The Anglo-Saxons would celebrate this wild hunt, as it was called, with a boar. And this is where we get the ubiquitous boar's head from. And let's face it, no pagan festival was quite the festival without a boar's head. Nowadays, I think some Marks and Spencer Percy pigs would work just as well. However, in those days, the boar's head was the centrepiece of the solstice feast. It's in honour of this wild hunt, potentially. But again, we just don't know, but it is believed that that is so. Yule is full of these lovely traditions and you can see where the Christian Christmas really just mimics the whole of Yule. Which do you celebrate? Leave me a comment below. Do you celebrate Christmas and Yule or just Yule or just Christmas? Personally, I celebrate sort of both. Let me know what you do. Leave me a comment below. If you've forgotten a Christmas present, I can solve that with the Ginny Metherall gift card. I'll put the links in the description box below telling you how to apply for one. Otherwise, check out my Patreon. And if you're missing Ginny Metherall between now and whenever I post next, do check out my Instagram because I post there a lot. Otherwise, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in a few days.